In its early stages of development, the Earth did not provide a suitable environment for large living organisms. In time, large land animals emerged. These were reptiles which invaded every possible environmental niche in water, in the sky, and on land. Some reptilian types have survived, but most have been superseded by a new class of animals which is further advanced along the evolutionary scale. These animals are better adapted to life on land. They are mammals. If we compare a reptile's characteristics with those of a mammal, we find that the mammal is much more advanced and better adapted to meet a changing environment. This reptile is active in a warm environment. The rate of living slows down in a cold environment. It is a cold-blooded animal depending on external sources of heat to maintain its body temperature. Most mammals remain active in cold environments. Their body temperatures are kept constant, mainly because they are warm-blooded. The reptile's legs are set out on either side of its body. It must raise its body off the ground by muscular action, entailing the expenditure of a considerable amount of energy. In contrast, the mammal's legs are set directly under its body. Bones, not muscles, support the animal's weight. The ear of a reptile is more rudimentary than that of the mammal. It lies close to the surface and is not covered or protected in any way. To conduct sound from the eardrum to the inner ear, there is only one small connecting bone. In the case of the mammal, there is an external flap which collects the sound and provides some protection. The eardrum is buried much deeper in the skull and is connected to the inner ear by three small bones. These three bones transmit sound vibrations to the inner ear with much greater efficiency. The teeth in a reptile's mouth are almost exactly alike. Different mammals, however, have evolved specialized teeth particularly adapted to their individual eating habits. For instance, the hamster has chisel-like teeth adapted for gnawing food. The dog, like many other animals, has incisors at the front for cutting food, strongly developed canines for tearing, and premolars and molars for shearing and grinding. At the back of the reptilian skull is a comparatively small brain. Its structure is primitive. The main portion of the cerebrum is concerned with the sense of smell only. Sight and behavior are the concern of a very small midbrain region. In comparison, the brain case of the mammal is much larger in order to accommodate a larger brain. In this case, the cerebrum is very much larger and is concerned with learning and with intelligent behavior. Except in alligators and crocodiles, the reptilian heart is three-chambered. One side pumps deoxygenated blood from body to lungs. The other side returns oxygenated blood from lungs to body. The common lower chamber 
allows the possibility of intermixing the two kinds of blood. In a mammal, the two sides of the heart are completely separated. The mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood is quite impossible. We have here an efficient pump. The blood maintains the temperature of a mammal's body above that of its surroundings. In a cold environment, each hair of a thick-furred animal is erected. This traps air to provide insulation. In warm conditions, the hairs lie flat against the body to allow the escape of heat. Most reptiles lay eggs. Unlike birds, however, they do not look after the eggs but desert them. The developing reptile is nourished by yolk material in the egg, but after hatching it must fend for itself. Mortality is high. On the other hand, nearly all mammals produce their young alive and care for them after birth. Some small animals produce many offspring at a time, as a litter. Large animals usually produce only one or two offspring at a time. They are nourished inside the mother's body through a placenta which is expelled with the young at birth. Mammals are so called because the mother feeds the young after birth through certain mammary glands. These mammary glands provide liquid food for the young. The fluid is milk. In every evolutionary class, there are always primitive examples of that class. The Australian duck-billed platypus is a mammal which lays eggs. So does the spiny anteater. Marsupials, such as the opossum, are somewhat more advanced. The young are born at a very early stage of development, when quite immature. After birth, they live in a specialized flap of skin on the mother's body, known as a pouch. The young marsupial attaches itself to a mamilla and continues to develop until it finally leaves the patch. The kangaroo is a marsupial. Mammals have successfully adapted themselves in different ways to many kinds of environment. The toothless anteater lives on ants and termites. Bats are mammals. They fly. Whales are mammals which live in the sea. They are the largest animals in the world. Some mammals eat meat. Others are vegetarians. Man himself is a mammal, distinguished above all others by his intelligence and powers of reasoning. These have enabled him to make remarkable changes in his own environment, modeling it to his requirements and wishes. He represents the most advanced development along the evolutionary scale.